Small Claims Collecting a Judgment Part 1. Collecting from an Individual It is up to you to enforce your own small claims judgment. The court will not do it for you. A judgment is good for 10 years and can be renewed for an additional 10 years. Interest accrues at a rate of 10% per year. The judgment creditor is the party, may be the plaintiff or the defendant, in whose favor a judgment has been awarded, the party who is owed money. The judgment debtor is the party, may be the plaintiff or the defendant, against whom the judgment has been entered, the party who owes money. There are several different options for collecting a judgment from an individual, including filing a debtor's exam, levying the debtor's bank account, garnishing the debtor's wages, putting a lien on the debtor's real estate, and suspending the debtor's driver's license, which is only available if the judgment was the result of a car accident. If the debtor did not complete the judgment debtor's statement of assets, form SC-133, then you can file a debtor's exam to find out more information about the debtor's income and assets. The judgment debtor is ordered to appear in court to answer questions. The judgment creditor conducts the exam. Sample questions can be found at this link. The judgment creditor can also subpoena the debtor's financial documents, including pay stubs, property deeds, and bank records. If the debtor is properly served and does not show up to the exam, a bench warrant may be issued. The debtor must be personally served by a sheriff or registered process server. To set up a debtor's exam, you will need the following forms. Application and order to produce statement of assets and to appear for examination, SC-134, Judgment Debtor's Statement of Assets, SC-133, and Small Claim Subpoena, SC-107. Complete and file the application and order to produce Statement of Assets and to appear for examination, SC-134, at the court. Pay the filing fee. See page 2 of Form SC-134 for detailed instructions. A blank form SC-133, Judgment Debtor's Statement of Assets, will also need to be served on the debtor. Unless the judgment has been paid, the judgment debtor must complete and mail form SC-133 to the judgment creditor within 30 days after the date the clerk mails A. The denial of their motion to vacate B. The dismissal of their appeal or C. The judgment against the judgment debtor's appeal. File the small claim subpoena, Form SC-107, along with Form SC-134 to subpoena copies of the debtor's financial records. A pre-issued subpoena may be downloaded at this link. Be sure to complete page 2 and indicate which financial records you want the debtor to bring and explain how good cause exists for the production of these documents. Page 3 will be completed after the debtor is served. Complete the Sheriff's Service Instructions. Have Form SC-134, a blank Form SC-133, and Form SC-107 served on the judgment debtor. It must be personally served by a sheriff or registered process server at least 10 days before the court date. A bank levy can be used to take money out of the debtor's saving and or checking accounts. You will need to know which bank the debtor uses. The account number is not required, but can be helpful. First, find out where to serve the bank levy. Some banks have specific locations where the levy paperwork must be served. Look up the bank on the California Department of Business Oversight website at this link in order to find the central service location. 
If the bank is not listed, any branch can be used. You will need the following forms for a bank levy. Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130. Make sure the writ is directed to the sheriff of the county where the bank is located. Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012. Notice of Levy, Form EJ-150. Sheriff's Instructions. Be sure to include the name and address of the bank. Litigants doing a bank levy must check with the Department of Business Oversight as to where the bank wants service of the levy. This is important as it will determine what county is named on the first line of the writ. For example, Bank of America will only accept at one address in Los Angeles, which is listed on that website. If the bank did not register a location, then the writ and levy may be served at any branch. Complete and file forms EJ-130 and MC-012 at the court. Make sure the writ is directed to the sheriff of the county where the bank is located. Pay the clerk for the issuance of the writ. Take the filed EJ-130 to the sheriff. There is room on page 2 to list any additional judgment debtors. Page 3 contains notice to the person served. Complete Form MC-012 and file it at the court with Form EJ-130. This form is used to add on any costs and interest that you may have incurred after the judgment. Note that Form MC-012 needs to be served by mail on the debtor and the proof of service on page 2 needs to be completed before it is filed at the court. The court clerk will not accept it if the proof of service is incomplete. Complete the Notice of Levy, Form EJ-150. Bring it to the sheriff to serve. You do not need to file this form at the court. There is additional information about the Notice of Levy for the judgment debtor on page 2 of this form. Complete the Sheriff's Instructions. Be sure to tell the Sheriff the name and address of the bank. The Sheriff will serve the filed Form EJ-130 and Form EJ-150 on the bank. Complete your information on page 2 so that the Sheriff can contact you to let you know whether the levy was successful. If the judgment debtor is employed, you can take up to 25% of the debtor's paycheck through a wage garnishment. You will need to know the name and address of the debtor's employer. The wage garnishment will not work if the debtor is self-employed or if the debtor's wages are already being garnished. The following forms are needed for a wage garnishment. Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130, Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, Form WG-001, Form WG-002, and Sheriff's Instructions. Complete and file Forms EJ-130 and MC-012 at the court. Make sure the writ is directed to the sheriff of the county where the debtor's employer is located. Take the filed form EJ-130 to the sheriff. There is room to list any additional judgment debtors on page 2. Page 3 contains notice to the person served. Complete form MC-012 and file it at the court with Form EJ-130. This form is used to add on any costs and interest you may have incurred after the judgment. Note that Form MC-012 needs to be served by mail on the debtor and the proof of service on page 2 needs to be completed before it is filed at the court. The court clerk will not accept it if the proof of service is incomplete. Complete Form WG-001 and take it to the sheriff. 
you do not need to file this form at the court. Complete Form WG-002 and take it to the Sheriff. You do not need to file this form at the court. Complete the Sheriff's instructions. Be sure to tell the Sheriff the name and address of the debtor's employer. The Sheriff will serve the filed Form EJ-130, Form WG-001, and Form WG-002 on the debtor's employer. Complete your information on page 2 so that the Sheriff can contact you regarding the status of the wage garnishment. The creditor can put a lien on any real property the debtor owns. A real property lien allows the creditor to collect money if the debtor tries to sell or refinance the property. For a real property lien, complete and file at the court the following. Abstract of Judgment Form EJ-001 and Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012. Then, record the Abstract of Judgment, Form EJ-001, in each county where the debtor owns property. Complete Form EJ-001 and have it issued by the court clerk and pay the issuance fee by submitting it to the court clerk where your case was filed. Take the original issued abstract to the county clerk recorder of the county where the debtor owns property and pay the recording fee. Page 2 allows you to add information about any additional creditors or debtors. Complete Form MC-012 and file it at the court with Form EJ-001. This form is used to add on any costs and interest you may have incurred after the judgment. Note that Form MC-012 needs to be served by mail on the debtor. Also, the proof of service on page 2 needs to be completed before it is filed at the court. The court clerk will not accept it if the proof of service is incomplete. As a creditor, you may be able to suspend the debtor's driver's license. This option is only available if the judgment against the debtor is for a motor vehicle collision. If available, this option will be stated on the judgment, suspending the debtor's driver's license. If the judgment is $1,000 or less, $750 or less for accidents prior to January 1, 2017, then you can suspend the debtor's driver's license for 90 days. Complete DMV Form DL-17. Complete all sections on page 1. Instructions for this form will be found on page 2. If the judgment is for over $1,000, over $750 for accidents prior to January 1, 2017, then you can suspend the debtor's driver's license indefinitely. Complete DMV Form DL-30. Complete all sections on page 1. Instructions for this form will be found on page 2. For more information, contact the Orange County Small Claims Advisory. If you are trying to collect from a business, go to the next section to learn more. Small Claims Collecting a Judgment Part 2. Collecting from a Business There are several different options for collecting a judgment from a business, including Till Tap, Keeper Levy, Examination, and Bank Levy. If the judgment debtor is a business with a cash register, then the creditor can send the sheriff to collect money from the cash register. To perform a Till Tap, you will need the following forms. Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130. Memorandum of Cost After Judgment, Form MC-012. And Sheriff's Instructions. You will also need to pay the Sheriff's Fee. Complete and file the Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130. And the Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, at the Court. 
make sure that the writ is directed to the sheriff of the county where the business is located. Take the filed form EJ-130 to the sheriff. There is room to list any additional judgment debtors on page 2. Page 3 contains notice to the person served. Complete the Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, and file it at the court with the Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130. This form is used to add on any post-judgment costs, interest, or credits to the judgment. Note that Form MC-012 needs to be served by mail on the debtor, and the proof of service on page 2 needs to be completed before it is filed at the court. The court clerk will not accept it if the proof of service is incomplete. Complete the sheriff's instructions. Check the box for till tap. Include any specific instructions regarding the business address and hours of operation. Complete your information on page 2 so that the sheriff can notify you if the till tap was successful. For an hourly fee, the sheriff will remain in the debtor's business and take all the funds that come in until the judgment is paid or the sheriff's time is up. The keeper collects cash, checks, and credit cards. To set up a keeper levy, you will need the following forms. Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130, Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, and Sheriff's Instructions. You will also need to pay the Sheriff's Fee. Complete and file the Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130, with the Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, at the court. Make sure the writ is directed to the sheriff of the county where the business is located. Take the filed form EJ-130 to the sheriff. There is room to list any additional judgment debtors on page 2. Page 3 contains notice to the person served. Complete the Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, and file it at the court with Form EJ-130. This form is used to add on any costs and interest or credits after the judgment. Note that Form MC-012 needs to be served by mail on the debtor and the proof of service on page 2 needs to be completed before it is filed at the court. The court clerk will not accept it if the proof of service is incomplete. Complete the sheriff's instructions. Select the option to place a keeper in the debtor's place of business. Complete your information on page 2 so that the sheriff can notify you with the results. If you want to find out more information about the assets of a business, Find the name of an employee who would have that information, such as the owner, corporate officer, or bookkeeper. To set up an examination of a third party, complete and file Form AT-138 slash EJ-125. Have it served on the person you want to bring into court. It must be served by sheriff or registered process server. To subpoena documents, use Form SC-107. Use direct link to pre-issued subpoena, L-520. Sample questions you can ask in an examination are available at this link. Complete and file Form AT-138 slash EJ-125 to set up a hearing date. It must be personally served by a sheriff or registered process server. Page 2 contains important notices about the order. Complete the small claim subpoena, 
Form SC-107 to subpoena documents. Use direct link to pre-issued subpoena, L-520. Complete page 2, indicating which documents you want the witness to bring to court, and explain how good cause exists for the production of these documents. The proof of service on page 3 will need to be completed after the witness is served. A bank levy can be used to take money out of a debtor's savings and checking accounts. You will need to know which bank the debtor uses. The account number is not required, but can be helpful. Litigants doing a bank levy must check with the Department of Business Oversight as to where the bank wants service of the levy. Some banks have specific locations where the levy paperwork must be served. This is important as it will determine what county is named on the first line of the writ. For example, Bank of America will only accept at one address in Los Angeles, which is listed on that website. If the bank did not register a location, then the writ and levy may be served at any branch. Complete the following forms for a bank levy. Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130. Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012. Notice of Levy, Form EJ-150. And Sheriff's Instructions. Include the name and address of the bank. Complete and file the Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130, with the Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, at the court. Make sure the writ is directed to the sheriff of the county where the bank is located. Take the filed Form EJ-130 to the sheriff. There is room to list any additional judgment debtors on page 2. Page 3 contains notice to the person served. Complete the Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012, and file it with the Writ of Execution, Form EJ-130, at the court. This form is used to add on any costs and interest, or acknowledge any credit, that may have been incurred after the judgment. Note that Form MC-012 needs to be served by mail on the debtor and the proof of service on page 2 needs to be completed before it is filed at the court. The court clerk will not accept it if the proof of service is incomplete. Complete the Notice of Levy, Form EJ-150. Bring it to the sheriff to serve. You do not need to file this form at the court. Page 2 contains information for the judgment debtor and information for persons other than the judgment debtor. Complete the sheriff's instructions. Be sure to tell the sheriff the name and address of the bank. The sheriff will serve the filed writ of execution, Form EJ-130, and the notice of levy, Form EJ-150, on the bank. Complete your information on page 2 so that the sheriff can contact you to let you know whether the levy was successful. For more information, contact the Orange County Small Claims Advisory. To learn more about the judgment debtors options, go to the next section. Small Claims – Collecting a Judgment Part 3 Options for the Judgment Debtor Debtor's Rights Judgment debtors have rights from certain abusive or unfair debt collection tactics from judgment creditors, including collection agencies. Creditors cannot make false or misleading statements, harass the debtor, request more than basic location information about the debtor from another person, 
tell the debtor's employer or others that the debtor owes the debt, except in the case of wage garnishment proceedings, contact the debtor before 8 o'clock a.m. or after 9 o'clock p.m. The debtor has options regarding the debt. They can pay the judgment creditor, pay the court, request a payment plan, or protect certain assets. You can contact the judgment creditor directly to arrange payment. Be sure to keep proof you paid the judgment creditor in full. When the judgment has been paid in full, the creditor will need to complete an Acknowledgement of Satisfaction of Judgment, Form SC-290, and file it with the court. You can pay the judgment directly to the court. For a fee, the court will total the amount of the judgment, including any costs and interest. Pay the entire amount to the court. The court will enter the Satisfaction of Judgment. This can take up to 30 days depending on the payment method. Benefits of paying the judgment directly to the court include avoid having to contact the creditor, pay the judgment even if you cannot find the creditor, resolve the case immediately, and the court is responsible for filing the acknowledgement of satisfaction of judgment. To pay the court directly, complete page 1 and file Form SC-145. The court will total up the judgment, interest, and any costs on page 2 of Form SC-145. You will pay the entire amount directly to the court. To set up a payment plan, you can either contact the judgment creditor directly and work out a payment plan, or file a request to make payments with the court. To request a payment plan, complete Forms SC-220 and Financial Statement Form EJ-165. The court will send a copy of your request to all other parties in the case. Complete the information about your income and assets on page 1 of the Financial Statement, Form EJ-165. Complete the information about your monthly expenses and debts on page 2 of the Financial Statement, Form EJ-165, and file it with Form SC-220. The other party will have 10 days to file a response using Form SC-221. The court will review the request to make payments and response and mail to the parties either a decision, Form SC-222, regarding the payment plan, or a notice to go to court. If the debtor does not follow the payment plan, the creditor can file a Declaration of Default in Payment of Judgment, Form SC-223, to notify the court and cancel the payment plan. As a result, the full judgment will become due and collectible. The judgment debtor will have 10 days to file a response to the Declaration of Default in Payment of Judgment, Form SC-224. The judge will review the Declaration of Default and Response and either make an order on the Declaration of Default Payments, Form SC-225, or make an order to go to court. When the court orders a payment plan, interest will not be included if the payments are made in full and on time. However, if the debtor misses the payment, unpaid interest may become due and collectible. Some assets are exempt from collections. To attempt to protect assets from collection, the debtor must file a claim of exemption within 10 days after receiving notice of levy or garnishment. File the claim of exemption with the levying officer, which is usually the sheriff. 
do not file the claim of exemption with the court. For a list of assets that may be exempt from collection, see Form EJ-155. The list of exemptions is continued on page 2 of Form EJ-155. To file a claim of exemption for a levy or other non-wage garnishment, complete the following forms. Claim of Exemption, Form EJ-160, and Financial Statement Form, EJ-165. File them with the levying officer within 10 days. Do not file with the court. Claim of Exemption, Form EJ-160. Complete the information about your income and assets on page 1 of the Financial Statement, Form EJ-165. Complete the information about your monthly expenses and debts on page 2 of the Financial Statement Form, EJ-165. For a claim of exemption on a wage garnishment, complete the following forms. Claim of Exemption, Form WG-006 and Financial Statement, Form WG-007. File them with the levying officer within 10 days. Do not file with the court. Fill out all of the information on page 1 of Form WG-006. Fill out all of the information about your income and assets on page 1 of Form WG-007. Fill out all of the information about your monthly expenses and debts on page 2 of Form WG-007. The levying officer will hold on to property or money until one of the following occurs. 1. 10 days go by and the creditor does not oppose your claim of exemption, or 2. The judge makes a decision at the hearing on the claim of exemption. If the creditor opposes the claim of exemption, then the debtor will receive the Notice of Opposition to Claim of Exemption, Form EJ-170 or Form WG-009, and the Notice of Hearing on Claim of Exemption, Form EJ-175 or Form WG-010. A trial date will be set to go in front of a judge. At the trial, the judge will make the final decision. If the creditor does not oppose the debtor's claim of exemption, then the levying officer will return the property or money to the debtor. For more information, contact the Orange County Small Claims Advisory. To learn more about collections, go to the next section. Small Claims Collecting Your Judgment Part 4 Additional Information If there was a clerical error on the judgment, complete a request to correct or cancel judgment and answer Form SC-108. Make sure to indicate that you are asking to correct the judgment. Identify the clerical error and explain why you want to correct the error. If you have additional documents to support your claim, then write Exhibits are attached as part of your explanation on Form SC-108. Attach the additional documents to Form SC-108. The other party will have a chance to answer before the court makes a decision. Correcting the name of the judgment debtor. If there was no clerical error, but you want to add additional names or an alias for the judgment debtor, then complete and file an Affidavit of Identity and Order, Form L-2527. File the completed form with the court. Attach any proof to the form. The court will respond to the request or set a hearing date. 
Please note that this form cannot be used to add new judgment debtors to the judgment. Default on stipulation of entry of judgment. If you and the other party went to mediation and completed a stipulation for entry of judgment, Form L-1151, and the other party did not follow the terms of the agreement, what can you do? You can complete a declaration of default, Form L-1152. If the judge signs off on the form, then the stipulation will be converted into a judgment and you can start trying to collect. If a judgment debtor has left California and no longer has assets in California, then you cannot use California's court tools to collect your judgment. In this case, you must transfer the judgment to the state where the debtor lives. Contact the court in the state where the debtor lives to learn more information. When calculating interest on your judgment, the unpaid judgment accumulates interest at a rate of 10% per year. How to calculate interest? Let's walk through an example. If the total judgment is $5,000 and the judgment was entered 30 days ago, multiply the total judgment by 0.10% to get the annual interest. 5,000 times 0 0.10 equals $500. Then, divide the total annual interest by 365 days to get the daily interest rate. Round up the number. $500 divided by 365 days equals $1.37. Finally, multiply the daily interest rate by the number of days. $1.37 times 30 days equals $41.10 for the total interest accrued. To add post-judgment costs, the judgment creditor must complete a Memorandum of Costs After Judgment, Form MC-012. Complete and file Form MC-012 with the court to add post-judgment costs or interest. Form MC-012 must be served by mail on the judgment debtor and the proof of service on page 2 must be completed before it is filed. The court will not accept the form if the proof of service is not complete. The judgment is good for 10 years. After 10 years, the judgment expires and is no longer enforceable. You can renew the judgment before the 10-year expiration date for an additional 10 years. The court will not remind you to renew your judgment. Any liens placed on the debtor's property must also be renewed. To renew your judgment, complete and file Application for Renewal of Judgment, Form EJ-190, and Notice of Renewal of Judgment, Form EJ-195. Form EJ-195 must be served on the other party. For more information, contact the Orange County Small Claims Advisory. If the judgment has been satisfied, go to the next section to learn more.